Hello, this is Pam with InfoTrust, and today I'm going to show you how to find your own data in Google Analytics using the UTM parameters. So first, why would you even be interested in finding your own data in GA? Well, there are three scenarios where this can be very helpful. The first and most common is that you're doing some testing. So this could be that you've added some new tracking to your website, for example, maybe you've added event tracking to some call to action buttons, or that you've made some general website changes. In either case, you need to verify your tracking, and the data that's being collected is making its way into the Google Analytics reports. Second, you might use this if you're doing troubleshooting. So maybe you see some unusual data in the Google Analytics reports, and you need to investigate. By being able to identify your own data, you can tell if you've been able to replicate the issue. And then finally, this technique is helpful for exploration and education. I use this a lot if I have a question about how Google Analytics works and I want to test it. So I go onto the site, perform the behavior that I'm interested in, and then see how that behavior is represented in the GA reports. So how do you go about doing this? Well, it is super easy. All you need to do is modify the URL that you use to visit the site. You need to add th these three parameters, UTM source, UTM medium, and UTM campaign, and then set them to a value, I like to use either test or QA, that you can use to identify yourself. So the key here is you can set them to whatever you like, but make sure that it's something you're not gonna confuse with other sources of traffic. So as an example, if my site was mysite.com, here I've added UTM source, medium, and campaign, and I've set them all equal to test PC. Now that I have my modified URL, I paste this into my browser, navigate to the site, and browse and perform my tests as I usually would. So the reason that this works is because Google Analytics reads the values from the URL and uses them to populate the source, medium, and campaign dimensions that you see in the reports. So since this data makes it into GA, you can use it in report filters or in advanced segments. So there are three ways you can see your data. The first is through the real-time reports. So if you're doing some basic testing, like testing that an event is firing or that the pages are being viewed, you can use the real-time reports to see your data in real time. However, this data is pretty limited that you can see in real time, so in most cases you'll want to use the second two approaches here across the standard Google Analytics reports. So the first way you can do it is that you can add source or medium as a secondary dimension in any of the Google Analytics reports. Then, reply, apply a report filter based on the value that you set in the URL. The other way you can do it is by setting up an advanced segment based on the value of source, medium, or campaign, and then applying that segment so that you can see, drill down all of the reports with just your data. So practically speaking, how do you do this? Well, of course you can manually modify your URL, or you can use any of these helpful tools. This first one I use a lot. It's a Google Chrome extension that produces a menu with boxes that you would fill in for the values of source, medium, and campaign, and then it auto-generates the modified URL. So you just paste that URL into your browser, and you're ready to go. The second link is almost exactly the same, but instead of an extension, it's a web page. And then finally, you could also use a spreadsheet, like I have here, um, to modify the URLs. So the benefit of the spreadsheet is that you have those modified URLs preserved for documentation and reference purposes. So now I'm going to go over to Google Analytics and show an example of how this all works. So for this example, we're going to use the Google Merchandise Store and the Chrome extension 
for UTM parameters. So here I'm going to paste in the URL that I want to visit. I'm going to fill in the values that I want to use for source, medium, and campaign. And then I'll copy and paste the modified URL. So I'm copying that, pasting it into my browser to navigate to the site. So now that I'm on the site, I can perform my tests or my session as I normally would. So I can click on these calls to action, I can view products, I can perform test transactions, uh, really do whatever it is that I need. If I go over to Google Analytics, I can begin to see my data in the real-time reports. So if I go over to the traffic sources report, I can see my data here, test PC, is one of the 17 users that are actively on the site right now. If I click into this, it applies a filter that persists across all of the real-time reports. So for example, if I click on the content report, I can see just the active page that I'm viewing right at this moment. So the real-time reports are helpful because you can see your data as it's coming into GA, but the data that's available is very limited. So in most cases, the real-time reports aren't sufficient and you'll need to wait for your data to be fully processed and available in the standard reports. So like I mentioned before, there are two ways you can identify your data in the standard reports. Um, first of all, you can use the report filters. So for example, in the source medium report, I can filter this report by typing in test PC in the search bar. And here I have the high level KPIs for the sessions that I've performed. Um, you can use this approach for any report that allows you to drop in source and medium as a secondary dimension. So if I am testing a new event, for example, I can come down to the top events report, add source medium, and then filter based on my value. So I can see that I've performed 19 events over both of those sessions. The other approach is to create a segment. So here I'm going to create a new segment. I'll call this source equals test PC. There we go, it works. So now I can view any of my Google Analytics reports with this segment applied. So for example, if I want to see the goal completions, um, make sure that those are working properly. Can navigate down to the goal overview and see that I've completed nine goals, um, goals four and goals 10. So as you can see, it's really easy once you modify the URL as I showed, to be able to see your data in Google Analytics. Now that I've shown you how to find your data, here are some tips and tricks to make your life easier. First, if you ever want to find your data, you must, must, must populate UTM source, medium, and campaign in the URL that you use to visit the site. The values of these variables can be the same or different. It's completely up to you. But what's most important is that you pick something that you can use to uniquely identify yourself and that you won't confuse with other sources of traffic. If you need to, there are two other parameters, UTM content and term, that you could use to provide even more information about your test. One thing that I found helpful is to save your modified URL for future use 
so you don't need to regenerate it every time you need to do some testing. And then finally, if you're doing multiple tests on the same day, you can use different values of source, medium, and campaign to differentiate those different tests. But one thing to keep in mind is that every time you set new values for these variables, you'll initiate a new session in GA. Alright, well thank you for watching my video and happy testing!